Okay, so I'm going to give you a brief um, hybridization refresher, and I'm going to try and do it in about two minutes or less. So remember that hybridization is a way to help us understand the particular molecular geometries that we see molecules form. And this is essentially the consequence of two distinct things, either electrons that are involved in a bonding pair, like we see in the molecule here, or electrons that are lone pairs. We know that these lone pairs and bonding pairs all repel one another. That's a key component of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And as such, they repel themselves to form a particular geometry. Here you can see that the molecular geometry is bent, but when we take into consideration the electron geometry, it's trigonal planar. Now, atomic orbital theory doesn't do a good job of explaining these shapes, and this is where hybridization comes in. The basic idea is that we know these bonds are forming between atoms and other atoms, valence electrons, and for nonmetals, those are electrons in the s and the p orbitals, for the most part. There are exceptions when you get into the period three elements where they start to have d block orbitals involved as well, but that's beyond the scope of this screencast. So the idea is those orbitals have to mix, and we give some evidence that they mix because we see very consistent results throughout, meaning we, when we look at something like methane, we see essentially four equivalent bonds. We don't see an SS bond uh, or a bond involving kind of S orbitals interacting that's different than from the P orbital interactions, uh, from those overlapping. So we have, we have a strong bit that there is a bit of an idea that there's something going on here where those orbitals are changing. And the idea is they're mixing. And the way that we call that is hybridization. So for tetrahedral structures, and that could be any situation that involves uh, four pairs of electrons around the central atom, whether they're lone pairs or bonding pairs, uh, we mix all of the s orbitals and the p orbitals together. And notice there are four distinct orbitals, one s and three p's. And when they mix together and hybridize, they become four degenerate sp3 orbitals. Degenerate meaning there's nothing really different from them aside from their orientation in space. So whether you're looking at something that has four bonds or something that has two bonds and two lone pairs, fundamentally, the electron geometry is the same. It's still tetrahedral in shape. Uh, this molecule right here should strike you as very familiar. It's water. Uh, we could also do ammonia, which is, again, the same hybridization. Three bonding pairs and one lone pair. So when you have a total combination of four equivalent uh, bonding pairs and lone pairs, that is always going to be sp3 hybridized. Now when we move into the next type that we discussed in class, sp2 hybridization, uh, the key difference is that, uh, well, there's just one less component to deal with. In fact, there's three equivalent pairs of electrons, whether they're bonding or lone. And in this case, you can see an example of that where we form a, a trigonal planar structure. Okay, and that trigonal planar structure would necessitate three equivalent hybridized orbitals, and we would call those sp2 hybridized. At this point, you might notice that all you have to really do to find out hybridization is count the equivalent bonds around the central atom, counting lone pairs also as an equivalent pair. So if we count, there's one, two, three. That means we need to mix an S and two Ps, which would give us sp2 hybridized uh, a hybridization necessary. And finally, we can quickly go through SP. SP only requires the use of two hybridized orbitals, so two orbitals mixing together to form two degenerate SP hybridized orbitals. A um, very common example is for carbon dioxide. And this is where we can also remind ourselves that equivalent pairs of electrons means treating multiple bonding pairs the same as a single bond. So even though you see we have two double bonds, those count as two equivalent bonding pairs in terms of the number of degenerate orbitals needed to account for this particular geometry. That's an overview of hybridization. Good luck studying tonight.